Welcome back, guys. It's Return to Tennis. I'm Aaron. Thanks for returning. So, we got something a little different today. A lot of, Something maybe a lot of people haven't tried. Uh, over the past, since I've been back, over the past couple years, I've really suffered from problems in my elbow and my wrist recently. Uh, it started with the elbow, and then the wrist started to get a little involved. So, I came, this year I finally came to... The realization that I could not play rackets with an RA over 64. Despite how much I love them, my elbow suffers. Uh, rackets that I really enjoyed this year that I loved playing, things like the Babylon Pure Drive 98. Hits great. A little bit of spin, some control, but a lot of power, but a 74 RA. My elbow was shot, my wrist was shot for the next two days. Another one was my Yamaha EX97. Again, stiff. Don't know how stiff because I can't find it, but very stiff. Next day or so, my elbow's no good. Um, my Donna Apollo Pro, I loved it. I took it out and I was just amazed at how well it hit. Next day, arm is not so hot. I tried some different string setups. I tried dropping some tensions on the frames to try to mitigate that that stiffness and it wasn't enough it couldn't do it so i started gradually you know going down uh went into storage you know went into the collection started pulling frames out that had lower ras and basically i got to a point where okay 64 was manageable 64 and below was good 64 i would still have a little agitation but it was manageable i could you know Put some stuff on my elbow, some liniment, maybe take some ibuprofen. It was manageable. 65 started to get a little too stiff again. I had pain. So 64, we've determined, is the cutoff. Started playing lower RA frames. The Prince's, uh, my Prince rackets are pretty low. The Head Speed Pro Legend, I played that one. Decent. Uh, but I would still have a little bit of irritation afterwards. And it wasn't because the RAs weren't low enough. It was just I'm re-aggravating the elbow and the wrist because I'm not taking time off. I can't afford to take time off, right? we got to get better. we got to play. So I decided to try something different that had been recommended by other creators online. They said that these rackets were amazing for the elbow. Uh, so I started playing a couple different rackets to see would the elbow improve while I was still playing if I played these frames that were basically designed for arm comfort specifically. One of those being the Donne rackets, the Donne line, the Pro Ones. I've been playing the Pro Ones a lot. No arm trouble at all afterwards, not even irritation. But the first racket that I went back and I started hitting that basically fixed the problem. Like I could play this racket continuously for hours, no aggravation, no irritation, no vibration coming into the joint in the arm and the wrist at all was the Pro Kenix, the Black Ace Pro, Ace of Spades, baby. Uh, this is the 305 gram, 97 square inches, 57 RA. But what makes this so special? There's rackets out there with lower RAs. I'm sure you've heard about this. It has the kinetic technology, which means there's all these micro beads or something in the frame that transfer through the frame as you swing it. So the weight moves towards the edge, which allows this racket to have a 330 plus swing weight, which is nice for a racket so light. But when impact occurs, the beads inside, they disperse and they basically kill vibration. It doesn't get through the frame and it works. Like I could play this no matter how much I played it. No matter how badly I miss hit a ball, nothing ever made it to my wrist or elbow. And within a couple of weeks, I didn't have any irritation at all, unless I went back and played something really stiff. Now, I don't know if you can hear it. I'm gonna give it a shake here. I don't know if that's showing up. It's not very loud. And that was something I was concerned with. I'd, I had read about them. I had heard that they make that noise. I'm like, is it going to distract me when I'm swinging. Am I going to hear this and it's, is it going to throw me off? It didn't. It doesn't bother me. Uh, gorgeous racket. Very well done. 
I got this out of Tennis Warehouse Europe. Everyone says yeah, I can't buy from Tennis Warehouse Europe in the US. That's not true. Matter of fact, I was buying tons of stuff from Tennis Warehouse Europe because I could get it so much cheaper. This year, they've called on to me. They, they figured out what I'm doing. So they shut me down, but not completely. So the new, it looks like the new standard or the where, where there's a loophole is if Tennis Warehouse Europe is offering a product that Tennis Warehouse US does not carry, you can order it, which would in most cases be strings. Um, Tennis Warehouse US did at one time have this racket. They don't anymore. Last time I checked, they didn't carry it. So I went to Tennis Warehouse Europe and it was on clearance and I got it at a really great price. Very beautiful racket. I don't know how I feel about this paint. It's that kind of, it's like the head speed where it's that very tactile kind of rubbery feel. I feel like this is going to fade. This is gonna rub off is what I feel like. But it plays beautifully, incredibly solid. Um, I know a lot of people that I've run into do not give Prokenix a shot. They kind of consider Prokenix like a third tier brand. So like your first tier is your big four, Yonix, Wilson, Babolat Head. Your second tier, now you start to see it probably, Technofiber, Dunlop, uh, Vocal, probably your third tier, or I'm sorry, your second tier. Your third tier is companies like Prince, Prokenix, uh, Artengo perhaps, because they do have some pros using their equipment. And then you have even like companies that are below that. Companies probably like, uh, maybe Selenko might be third tier. Selenko could be third tier, I guess. But companies like Donne, uh, Diadem are probably like that fourth tier in terms of how people view them. But that doesn't mean they don't make a quality product. Their products are still fantastic. They just don't have the uh, brand recognition or the cult following, the, the fan following that the top tier guys do. This is a extremely well-made racket. Extremely well-made. I really enjoy it. Fantastic plain stick. So it has the beads. It has vibration killing here. There's no door here. This is all designed to stay solid together. Uh, good on spin, solid on power. Very, very comfortable, like extremely comfortable. Fixed basically all my elbow problems. So if I go and I pick up something else, as long as it's under a 64, I don't have any irritation. Uh, another, like I said, another ragged that was really good for my elbow were the Donnays. And that's what I've been playing mostly a lot lately. We're going to get out, give this a hit. Uh, we got some film hitting it. Probably be one of the last ones we make this year because the weather is about to turn really bad. Cold, wet, rainy, snowy. Uh, so today might be the last day we get some decent sunny weather to hit with. It's pro it's supposed to be pretty windy out, though. But let's go out. Let's take a look at it. And we'll see how it goes. Here we go. The Black Ace Pro 305. 97 square inches. Uh, 305 grams unstrung. Obviously has an RAF. 57 but a swing weight of 330 plus really really solid feeling racket a little windy out but this is probably gonna be the last manageable day we get with the weather it's gonna turn wet and cold really quick just in real solid feeling frame I know I talk a lot about frames feeling hollow to me especially newer frames Currently, what's being produced on the market, um, a lot of them have that hollow feel. That is not the case with this one, and I thought it might because the way it's designed to have those micro beads able to move and transfer, that the frame would come off feeling hollow, and it, it doesn't. It just feels really clean and smooth and solid on contact. Uh, power, despite its uh, very, very flexible beam, it does generate fair power uh, of course has great control it is a control racket but the big standout is the comfort like no matter how badly I miss hit a ball which is often enough even if it's right off the frame no vibration makes it down the frame I get nothing in my arm um, 
but because of that, for a, a lot of people, the spracket may feel kind of muted. Uh, you may not be able to get a feel on contact of what's going on with the ball. I don't have that problem with it. I'm pretty sensitive to that, uh, which is probably why my elbow gets stressed so quickly. Um, but it is just absolutely fantastic. Completely fixed all of my elbow and wrist issues. Like I hit it for one session and I had no irritation afterwards. No swelling, no uh, pain, nothing. Continued to play it for the next couple of weeks. Um, was alternating between it and my Don A rackets because I get a similar result with my Don A frames. Uh, their foam cores and their unibody structure for flex really help eliminate a lot of vibration as well. Now, if you had to choose one, if you said, okay, which racket is going to be best to handle vibration and protect my arm, I would have to say that the Prokenix is probably the best choice. Second would be the Don A frames. But just a really great feeling racket, guys. Uh, if you can grab one out of Europe at Tennis Warehouse, they're on sale, I would do so. If it's nice where you are, uh, take advantage, guys. Get off the couch and get on the courts. We'll see you again soon.